welcome, 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 welcome. It has been a, a little while since we've seen each other in person. Well, through the screen anyway. Um, happy full moon in Libra. I feel especially um, empowered by this one. I... I am home now after my three month trip, which was mucho profundo. And, and as I sort of digest and, and um, re-enter my sort of life here in New York, the, the concept of relationships and the Libra kind of energy has been huge. I think, um, <clears throat> just to sort of share some basics so Libra is about balance it's about um, relationships it's about money it's about power uh, the balance of power maybe like sovereignty um, uh, self-worth value and that has been like hitting me upside the head it's it's been incredible having realizations around um, Kind of what we do in our lives and I you know I'm very all very much slash always talking about myself but I but I think the these concepts are universal about what a we, what we don't realize in our own value about ourselves you know of um, who we are and what we offer like one of the things that really became kind of interestingly apparent to me when I was traveling that when you meet someone and, and, and you don't speak a language Sometimes I would try and explain myself of who I am and what I've done. And I realized I was sort of telling everybody like this tiny, 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 tiny like part of myself. Like I'm from Australia, I lived in London, New York, DC. You know, I've done this job events, this, that, and the other. But like I just was barely scratching the surface. And, and I, it made me think about how when we maybe meet people, we don't really tell the full version of who we are we, we either just tell a portion of that or and, and that might be due to environmental or situational in the sense of like we don't have time or maybe it's not appropriate um but i think there is this incredible power of really owning who you are you know obvio <laughs> my favorite word while i might was traveling but but i really just want you to hear that like Owning the power of who we are and our own value and how important that is in the relationship with ourselves, the relationship with source, the relationship with, you know, God, universe, angels, guides, whatever you want to say, um, the re relationship we have with our immediate family, our wider networks, our work people and, and our platonic and, and, and romantic relationships. And I think that when I started to see mirrored back to me in, in some pretty like intense slash real <laughs> ways. Um, I started to see not only I, I didn't really have any idea or, or any sort of um, true embodiment and maybe the understanding is there but it's, it's buried or it's pushed aside or something like that but like the true embodiment of actually who I am and the value that I, I bring to myself, let alone to my environment, my family, my world, my, my career, my artistry, my, you know, expression, all of those things, you know, in the full gamut of that. And I'm always speaking to you on multi-levels here of, of, of what that means as, as a conscious being, as a human, as a woman, as, a, um, as an artist, as a creator, as a, as a contemplator, as a manifester, all of those. And also um, how, and this for me was the biggest, hardest pill to swallow, was actually how we look to other people to, I don't know about tell us about our own value, but reflect us back at least. And, and a lot of this I think is subconscious, you know, I, I certainly wasn't waking up every day going, I've got to find someone to tell me that I'm amazing. Like, I, I didn't think like that. I think it, it drove some of the yearnings underneath and I wanted to 
I wanted to hear back from certain people because I felt like if I heard back from certain people, and for me that's men, I love doing that. <laughs> then if they saw value in me, then I could find or accept or, or honor or, or receive the value of myself, which I, I, I want to just let that sit for a second. Like until I saw, until I see slash saw my own value, it, it's pretty impossible for anyone in any type of relationship to reflect that back to me. Hmm. And I'll be honest, like I'm pretty, I don't like to use the word of embarrassing. I, I had a friend once that asked me to look up the definition of embarrassing or embarrassed. And I think that it, it's kind of interesting because it sort of reflects an element of shame or something, and, and that's not where I want to go with this. I, I want to invite, um, I want to invite growth and learning from me being able to actually really see reflected back these people who weren't valuing me and didn't see my value, and I was like dancing and. I mean, people that know me, you, you know, I'm sure you know all of these stories and, and more and, and, and can understand, like, there was all this dance that I was doing to, to ensure that these people would see and find and, and, and understand my value and, and receive it. And um, that shit's got to stop. I mean, let's just mark that with you right here, right now. That shit has to stop. One, it's just toxic for myself, and two, it's just, it's not even true, because if I'm looking to someone else to give me my value, then who the fuck are they in the first place? Why do they have someone to give over my value more than I do? Apologies, I'm going to swear words. So, I think that this moon is about, and I think Nikki Brocco, my favorite magical soul, witches, bitches, whatever she is, you know, really talked about sovereignty and it's taking that sovereignty back that I give myself the value and I give myself the worth, the self-worth and I give myself the love and if I can feed myself those things prior to anyone else, then that's when it truly makes sense and that's also when I can vibrate at a level that I'm then giving that back out. Or actually, sorry, let me rephrase that. I, I can receive that in, in a more deeper, truer fashion because I see it in myself first. And I think there's this, um, you know, we talk about filling your own cup first and, and you can't fill others until you, you fill your own. But, but I think there's, you can't be seen until you see yourself. And I had to really learn the hard way to see myself. And I think, you know, I think we're still doing it. We're going to be doing it every single day. And as we almost, I feel like not only was my trip a, a pilgrimage, but it was also a sort of self-reclamation. I don't know if anyone's read um, The Woman Who Ran With Wolves. And and it's an incredible book, and, and you know, dense in a sense, but you know, the premise is just self-reclamation of women and, and rediscovery of who we always were and remembering. You know, I think as a, as a planet, we're in this collective remembering of who we are. And what we bring to the earth and as a as a race of people or humans we're, we're uncovering and, and, and recover discovering what it is to be human and, and how it is to be to react and how it is to yearn for things and how it is to care for ourselves when we we don't get what we want or what we desire and how then to also see how things are turning up for us so that as we go through the, the, the journey of discovery or, or um, self-reclamation, we are doing it with not only a gentle hand and a kind heart for ourselves and, and compassionate perspective or, or approach, we're also doing it with, you know, with truth and, and um, there was something the Leo King, I was listening to him the other day, anyone that knows of the Leo King, he, he, you know, his astrological sort of 
channeling and insights are, are very powerful, albeit you know through his own <laughs> package and lens. Um, but it was something about um, you're gonna love because it's really simple. Let me get my book here. But and the fact that I can't remember it, but it was. hilarious that I can't remember it but the key to your soul is admitting the truth about yourself about other things and I had to really admit some things about myself that I look for value I look for love and respect and actually yes I look for respect but that's not it I, I look for others to give me my value and especially in, in romantic relationships. And, and I think back to, um, I think back to the time where I was in my, you know, narcissist romance scam, let's say 2015, 2018. Um, there were a lot of times that that person I was with kind of manipulated situations and caused fights and dramas in order to sort of like, <clears throat> no doubt take the heat off him but also to confuse me and and also to kind of from a gaslighting perspective sort of make me question myself you know I think we're all familiar with this process whether you're in a narcissist romance scam or not everybody is is familiar with those people that really make us question ourselves but my point being every single time that situation was manipulated and he sort of left or we broke up or whatever it is the language is is important but not the focus I then questioned who I was and my value of like I was 40 and I'm a nobody and I've got to start again and I don't have a boyfriend and what am I gonna do and everyone's gonna laugh and, and I'm running out of time to have a family and a baby I mean just some far out stuff some really 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 like I don't know horrible stuff to myself but I didn't have any self-worth or value I didn't have any understanding that my self-worth or value was was of value or, or, it, it, or it, it had a place or a role or, or um, it deserved any attention even. It was so focused on other people and other things and so far from myself and so I think you know, again, this pilgrimage, this self-reclamation has been a journey inward. And I think every day we're taking the invitation to look inward at ourselves, you know, to really understand why am I feeling this way? What am I yearning for? How am I moving towards that? What is coming up for me every single day or, or week or month that is the same thing that I'm not seeing? Because anything that's coming back more than once, and I mean, you know, again, not to go back to the word embarrassed, but I, I have carried a lot of shame and um, <laughs> um, I say now hilariousness with myself because there were many places that I was in a state of um, disillusion with myself about my own self-worth and mostly that was because I believed that if someone else valued me then I was of value and that I saw some girl yesterday wearing a sweatshirt that said um, Yes Way Rosé or something and I, it made me laugh. So like Yes Way Rosé to our own value and giving it to ourselves and our own sovereignty of not only knowing what our, um, knowing what our value is, but then also, you know, staying with that, holding that and, 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 and and anchoring ourselves to that. So as we are, you know, washing machine through life, we can know that like, you know, I'm mixing in many, many things here, but none of this stuff that I'm sharing is new. I think everybody knows that, right? This is just some sort of, I don't want to say regurgitation because I think that has a funky sound to it, but like, you know, the concept of love and light and, you know, I don't want to go good and evil, but you know, this is beyond me. This is, before me, many, many years, AD, BC, whatever. But like the concept of, 
you know, love and fear and, you know, high vibrations, low vibrations, all of that stuff. This is all ways that I'm, I'm repackaging or resharing situations so that you can find a different level of understanding or potentially even um, use this to find your own way to then uh, to navigate this stuff. Because I think that the sovereignty we have of our own journey ourselves, you know, we can learn from, you know, the greats, Tony Robbins, Oprah, um, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow, Sophia Coppola, like we can learn from anybody everywhere in, in any sort of forum, in the arts, in, in the in metaphysical world, Marianne Williamson, whatever, it doesn't even matter. They're all, it's all the same message. It's all about vibrations. It's all about how we speak to ourselves. It's all about love. It's all about truth. And it's all about owning who we are and actually seeing who we are. I've been talking a lot and, and writing a lot and sharing a lot with different people sort of on the journey around um, this concept of dysmorphia and identity dysmorphia. And I've looked at my own journey in terms of body dysmorphia a lot. And, and I know that if we were to sort of like go up against the white wall and draw um, a outline of what we think we look like compared to what we actually do look like, there's absolutely dysmorphia. It's amazing. During the camp last year, I, I did one of the sessions was this body art, and I'll put a picture in the um, chat, or um, uh, if you're seeing this elsewhere, link you to the photo. Um, the the point being um, that there's this body print that I did that really actually is me in the full woman of who I am. It's funny because it reminds me very much of my mother. And it's really beautiful. She's got, I mean, she, she's got beautiful boobs. Let's just hold that thought for a second. I'm gonna see if I can turn this camera around and show you one second, because she's on display in my apartment. One sec. So here she is. This was the body print I did during the camp. And I love her. The waist, the, the hips, the, the fullness in the belly and the legs. I, I sort of feel like there's two bodies inside this. I see a thinner one and then I see the real kind of one, which is why I say it, it reminds me of my mom. There's a fullness, there's a womanliness, there's an um, exquisiteness. And she's really alive. There's such a um, sheen. It's all done with these beautiful um, paints, the gold, the silver, and the bronze that were kind of, um, you know, metallic. And they really, I feel, um, really spoke to kind of the fullness of who I am. And I think that's really what I learned for this moon to actually uh, see the fullness of myself and be really, 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 really truthful with that. And then also love and embrace every part of her so that I can share her with the world in different ways, using, using the discernment of who to share what with. And, and kind of in a way, knowing that there's certain pieces that will be for some and certain pieces that will be for others and, and none for others you know I think it's a journey of, of who and what we share things with and as we yearn for connection being truthful with ourselves does this line up in terms of um, alignment in terms of this relationship in terms of this connection and then from there coming from a full place to share that with someone who really sees the full value like if you were to you know to look at me in the flesh and the picture like what do you see and, and do you see the fullness but again I expect that you don't see, you have probably have your own visions, but, and, and using this on yourself, this is not about me, um, but until we see that within ourselves, how can we, um, how can we give that to others? So, the fullness of who we are, the truth of who we are, and the worth, the self-worth and self-power, self, I don't know, self, self power, that's not the right word, self, um, I don't know, it 
it's more than self-love. It, it's really like this deep, 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 deep value of ourselves and, and how we value ourselves and what we think our value is. Like in terms of Like, what do we bring to our relationships? What do we bring to our connections? What do we bring to our interactions? And, and do we really see the value in that? You know, I, I think I went through, I went through this, I, I think it's no accident too that we are, I, I know for me, my journey has been like, I think maybe 20, 13, 14, I started to work through my consciousness in relation to my work and how I was in a work context. And then it sort of shifted from of the work into more of a personal side and that's really what I've been sort of concentrating on the last few years or, or has been more right for me to work on um, or, or to revisit or to reclaim or to whatever. Um, I don't say whatever as in it's not important or the word but more of like all of the things. Um, and I, rem I remember someone sort of asking me for some information about events and they wanted me to put together a budget and something, something, something. And it was very easy and quick for me and I did it fast and, and, and it was sort of this realization that just because I can do something fast and quick and it's easy for me doesn't mean it, it's of no value or, or it shouldn't be paid for its worth. And I think that also comes around in our uh, sort of interactions on the personal side, you know, in the more romantic side as well. Just like actually seeing what we bring to relationships and the value of that. You know, I think there was one point where I felt over the last, I don't know, chunk of time in, in that sort of relationship that I was in where I was sort of doing so much but didn't even see the value within myself. I mean, that's, I think, why I was doing those things is not unimportant but not for this conversation right now, but really it's just about seeing the value of those things and how what I brought to the table and, um, and actually thinking that, you know, if I could say the two sides of myself originally or, or sort of prior to my breakdown, breakthrough, um, was not seeing the value of those, just thinking those things, well, everybody did them or those things, you know, didn't, they weren't special or, um, you know, that I, I wasn't, it wasn't a big deal that I was bringing those things when actually really it was. And that's part of, you know, when anyone that's kind of worked with me in a, in a, in a business concept, I mean, my, you know, when I think about events, I think about them being, it's, it's so much more than just like the food, the music, the, the venue, the, you know, the music let's say it's it's about how people feel when they arrive it's about what the messaging is does it make sense it, it, you know how are the you know how are the people handling themselves within the event that, that are running it or, or sort of even like you know hosting it and how are they interacting with the people and, and what do they want from them and, and i think it, it's so much more encompassing and and so when you start to apply that with yourself of how you turn up in relationships it's not just like did i turn up to the meeting with the papers and the, and the, the right answer it's like what energy am I bringing? What connection did I make? How did I speak to the people that I'm dealing with? Like, there's so many parts of it. And our relationships are more than just romantic. I mean, we all know that there's, you know, what we have with ourselves is the biggest one. You know, how do I turn up to that? How do I see that myself in that? And, and, and am I seeing the full spectrum to then know how I can maybe turn on those tools at different times or, um, depending on who I'm with, work out what, what, um, I don't know, I'm going to say the word medicine that I need to share with that person, you know, is it just listening or is it offering advice or is it, you know, playing some music? Is it singing a song? Is it, is it cooking something? You know, like there's different ways that we bring our, ourself to relationships and, and it's not just like, you know, you turn up and give this, it's, it's, you know, it's maybe less tangible in some ways. Um, so that has been where my playground is at and um, you know seeing these situations reflected back to me you know it's you know as a grown woman 45 years old <laughs> um, you know like there's a lot around the shame of 
who we You know, if we're all calling in every relationship and every experience in order to learn something, you know, as as real as I'm being with myself about what I've called in to learn, there's also the other side of me that needs to be gentle and realize that I've called that in and therefore to not beat myself up. So we have this balance and that's where the balance is for me of like, how can I be seeing myself? And, and that balance could come too on a... Um, like the angle of uh, um, stay with me um, you, you know, I, I, cocky is not the right word but you know like I'm full of myself you know there's balance with like the humility that we bring to when we know who we are and what we do it's like how do we then balance the humility of turning up in certain situations with uh, all that we are in a way that we aren't I'm going to say distasteful with how that is so I'm wishing you fabulous release and introspection and possibility and truth to really 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 be dead ass honest with yourself about who you are and the fullness of, of what you bring and where you want to go with it and all of your dreams everything is of value and to invite you maybe even to, to do some journaling or to writing or sing a song or play a game of cricket and think about it whatever you do whatever you get into but um have a look at all the places where you bring value and then kind of look at your self-worth connected to that of what how you see yourself and what you what you think you have or don't have and then really actually see the breadth and depth of who you are and and then you know be cognizant over the next few days whatever to to look at how you turn up in certain situations and relationships to see how much of yourself you bring or do you hide yourself or do you um do you forget not value you know how can you remember who you are and bring that to the table and really own it and have the sovereignty of your heart and your mind and your soul and the desires and your yearnings but also your mistakes and the lessons that took a couple of times to come back around I mean I'm not you know for those of you that know me you know that my <laughs> You know, I've had my weaknesses in, in terms of my relationships and, and the people that I call in, but I know they've all been there to help me see my own self-value because I, I didn't see it myself. And um, so I invite you to look at all the things that you are and do and be and, you know, say thank you. And um, ask more of the same or less of something you know like speak it to the world like you know universe god thank you for all of the relationships that you've brought me to this day that have helped me clear this muck in myself that have ha helped me really see who i am so i can come to the table in every possible way with a fullness and so i can attract the people in my life to to live and work and breathe and share my space with that reflect who I am and the value of what I bring and you know have the same values of what they what they believe in and what they think is of value and worth and um, and will meet me and I ask for my higher self to to take the highest parts of myself you know the fullness of myself and bring that to each of the relationships so that I can really show up for myself and know that then that will be matched but wherever I vibrate and move in the world what I bring and who I am will be matched matched exceeded grown expanded all of those <sighs> let's take a minute to just um, let that sink in Maybe you're repeating after me a little bit. 
on this full moon in Libra, I ask my higher self to guide me to bring all of the parts of myself, to bring the full breadth and depth of my whole self to the surface, to the table, to the light, so that I can be matched in all relationships, in all interactions or situations. I can be matched in the vibrationally. I can be matched from a soul frequency. And I can blossom and be myself in a way that inspires others to be themselves and allows me to, to lean into my yearnings, my yearning for love, my yearning for companionship, my yearning for friendship, my yearning for fun, my yearning for adventure, my yearning for knowledge bringing all of myself and who I am in all of the parts, the light and the dark, bringing it together. And standing in front of the mirror and really looking at myself of who I am, the full body imprint. And going back to the dysmorphia, we, we often don't see who we are. We have this sort of miss understanding or this misconception of who we are and what we bring to the world and I really want you to, to look at that vision of yourself draw your art and see who you think you are and then realize come to realize the difference because my gut is there's a gap and we're closing that gap in every part of our you know this identity dysmorphia I'm closing the gap in every part of myself you know with my relationships with my Myself, my people, my art, my creativity, my creativity, my craftsmanship, all of those things, closing the gap so that I see exactly who I am and exactly what I'm here to offer and exactly the value I have and that gap between the reality and the truth and then my sort of vision of it is, is, is close, is clean, is, is clear and real and truthful and honest. Write a list of all the things that you are, that you value in yourself, yourself, what you think is worthy, what you bring to the table. Write a list, that put sticky notes around, whatever it is. Find a place to record this, to remember it, and to offer it up. And then let it go and know that you will embody that. Step into it as a skin. We've talked about skin before. Step into it, own it. love you all very much. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for following my journey. Thank you for opening your hearts. Thank you for expanding your consciousness. I'm going to leave you with this. I've mentioned before that Lacey Phillips talks about the, the vessel and the, the funnel, pardon, and that as we expand our consciousness, we're sort of expanding our funnel almost like a bandwidth so that we can take in more light. And as we have the capacity to take into light more light and, and recognize our, our own light, we also then have the capacity to meet others. And I think this, this is sort of like an expansion and in a true, like maybe again our vision of our picture on the wall is, is this, but our, we're only using this amount of bandwidth. So let's really step in. Let's really, 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 really step in to the full bandwidth of who we are and bring it to every part of our lives, every part of our being, but it's gotta come through us first. We all know that. We all know that deep down, that it has to come through ourselves first and then from there, anything's possible. So I wish you a beautiful expansion. I wish you an, an 
an ability to release things on this full moon so that you can open that pipe and clear it out and have more space for more capacity. So you can take in more light. Sometimes it gets stuck with stuff we don't need anymore. We just let it go. Write about it, sing about it, dance about it. Burn it in paper, whatever you need to do. Tell your trees. Talk to your trees, talk to your animals. Whatever you need to do, transmute it through the earth. This trip for me was huge in terms of transmuting some really big, big fears, some big, deep, dark, I was going to say angelic, but that's not the word, these deep, dark things that were inside of me, transmute them through the earth and let the earth, it's almost like you need a place that big, you know, I think about the mountains and the volcanoes where I was, <clears throat> for anyone that hasn't seen the, the photos, um, you know, I'll, I'll include the link again. Um, there's a lot there, so don't feel compelled to, to have to look at any one or all. But to have um, a vastness of nature available to us to transmute such deep darkness and, and, and collective darkness too. We're in a collective, a state of collective remembering, and I think we're also in a state of collective releasing. And this this full moon is a, is a beauty for that. So have fun, enjoy, and um, bring the fullness of who you are because I promise you it's pretty, pretty amazing, especially from where I sit. I love you. Thanks very much for coming. And um, to all my beautiful friends and family and loved ones and new friends and everything, um, thank you for listening. I, um, I, uh, I've been, I've been really listening to my music that I made a few years ago. Uh, again, I'll put the link here. And some of these songs that I really was manifesting, some of the lyrics, like some of the stuff that's happening and, and also, um, you know, kind of being ahead of your game. Like I look back at some of the stuff that I wrote and I was so ahead of the work that I'm doing now. So it's really beautiful to have that as, a, as an anchor and a support as I go through this journey. Um, all right. Love you. Have an amazing day. Enjoy. And, um, and remember how incredible you are because um, the world needs you. So let it out. Be full. And um, enjoy. I love you. I love you. Bye.